Okay, my YouTube people. I wanted to do a video on how ignitions work. And this somewhat holds true. The theory and the principle of it is true for anything that has an ignition uh, coil. So what you have is you have the battery minus and plus, And this symbol here is universal electronic signal for ground. So when you see it on multiple points here, it basically means that these points are connected back to the negative of the battery. You don't have to draw all the wire back. It makes it confusing, simpler to see the schematic version of it. So when it is that you are looking for spark out of your spark plugs, the way this works is you flow from the positive battery. Now, generally, it is accepted in electronics that current flows from negative to positive. However, I'm going to show it from positive to negative because in the explanation, it's easier to understand. So current flows this way over to your coil. Now, your coil is literally a coil of wire. If you look right here, the primary, which is where the voltage is over here, from the battery is a coil of wire and they call this the primary uh, PRI primary and over here there's a second coil called the secondary when you come down here and the points close ground that completes the circuit now you build a magnetic field here and that magnetic field is built both directions and it has a polarity, a north pole and a south pole. And that polarity is in relationship to how the battery is hooked to it. It builds up this magnetic field and it induces that magnetic field over into another coil over here. They are two totally separate coils not connected to each other. When the magnetic field builds up into the second side, it also has a north and a south side. And let's just say for argument's sake that this is north and this is south along with this, north and south. Now, nothing happens during this time. You're not going to get spark. The only thing you're going to do is build this magnetic field up. What happens is when the points open like they are here, so in other words, you build that magnetic field when they're closed. When the points open, this magnetic field on the primary collapses. And when it collapses, it causes it to collapse over on the secondary side. And generally, they collapse in the opposite direction. This collapsing of the magnetic field induces the, the collapsing on the primary, induces a collapse on the secondary. And that causes it, when it collapse, collapses, it causes a discharge of voltage. That discharge of voltage is what sends the, the voltage down the spark plug wires to the spark plugs. Now, your plug wires, that voltage is going to come down like this. And there's an electrode. It's just a copper wire or a thick piece of copper that goes through the center spark plug here. And that voltage now comes down here. And it jumps an arc across here, and that's your spark. The outside of the spark plug is connected to ground. Your motor is grounded. So they're in the heads. The heads conduct through the motor back to the negative side of the battery. You might think, why not just hook the, vo the 12 volts right to the plug wire and then turn it on and off with the points? What happens is there's only, in the primary, there's a little bit of windings and it's literally just a piece of wire that's coiled in a circle. And let's just say there's a hundred coils over here. And over the secondary side, let's just say there's a hundred thousand. So with that being said, if you have a hundred thousand on one side and you divide that by a hundred, it equals 1,000. 
In other words, if you have 100 volts over here, it's going to step it up, whatever that field is, it's going to step that up a thousand times increase over the other side. So if that is 100 volts that were here, you would have 10,000 volts or 100,000 volts over here. And, and that's pretty much how it works. Now there's more than 100 coils, uh, 100 windings, 100 times around on that coil of wire and there's and there's a lot over here generally coils on the primary side are very very thick because they're handling battery current you're shorting the battery across there they're very thick wires over to this other side in order to get that many wires you have to have very very thin wire the voltage out of the coil on the secondary side that voltage that's coming out of here is generally around 30,000 volts and it can be as high as 50,000 for a motorcycle. There, there's some pretty relatively standard numbers. When you go to check a primary, they'll always talk about there's a low resistance over here and I will show you this. Generally, primary windings are anywhere from 2 ohms up to 5 ohms. Generally, over the other side here, the resistance, if you measure from plug to plug wire, is somewhere around 10,000 ohms to 13,000 ohms. Okay? And the reason for that being is there's real low ohms because there's not a lot of wire here that, you're, that would have resistance. And the reason the other side is high because there is a lot of wire that you're checking the resistance of. If you measure over here and the ohms are out of range, it's bad on the primary side. You can't have 100 ohms over here. And if you go over to the secondary side and you measure from uh, the plug wire output to the plug wire output, and, and this is on a dual fire, like all the, um, every motorcycle up until the twin cam that was two-cylinder Harley from, let's say, knuckle all the way up to twin cam, they were dual fire. They fire both spark plugs at the same time. When you're testing your coil is, you complete this circuit and you have the positive battery to the primary side of the coil. You don't need the points to check it or electronic ignition. This is how they work. They're no different. Electronic still, you know, completes the circuit electrically, allowing this coil to charge. Okay, the primary coil to charge. And then it's when you open the circuit is when you get the spark, not when you close it. So when you're troubleshooting, it's important to understand that. If you close this, you're not going to see spark until that magnetic field builds up. Let's take a look at the practical application of what's going on. Right now, my meter says infinite. It's on ohms. So if we are checking with the ohms with a meter, now I happen to have a, a soft tail service manual for an Evo. And this Evo manual states that the primary should be two and a half to three ohms, 3.1 ohms, and the secondary 10,000 to 12,500 ohms. Now, this is an Excel coil, and they're basically calling it a 4-ohm coil. I'm going to take my leads for my meter, and I'm going to go, it says that it is 4 ohms. And I just want to make sure that you can see that. So we go here, go to the other side, and 4 ohms. So it's pretty straightforward with that. If it were a lot more, it's bad. It's just that simple. Next, lead to lead. This is the secondary. You can see it says 12.17. But if you look, there's a little K down there. And that's engineering notation. K means three zeros. So that's 12,180 ohms. And that would be in spec. So there's nothing that's a lot of magic here at all. It's just understanding. 
the primary and the secondary and how they work. So I'm going to hook the plug wires back up to this. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the light off so that you can see what's going on when I try this. Now I happen to use, be using a battery charger. Obviously it doesn't put out the current that a battery puts out. So I'm going to put the battery charger on here. Now to do the points, I'm just going to connect the, the ground to the negative side of the coil. And, and when we go back to this schematic diagram, you have the negative side of the coil to ground through the points. So me taking this on and off is the same thing as me, as the points opening and closing. Now I have to turn the lights off. The lights are off and you'll be able to see the spark on the spark plug. Hopefully. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. I can see it. And that's me taking the... It's a weak spark because I'm using my battery charger. So hopefully you can see that spark. And again, all I was doing is just putting this over here like this, but it's so bright you can't see it. But that's how you could check a coil. If you're on your motorcycle and you can't, you don't, you think that you have some kind of ignition problem, either the coil's bad or what have you. If you pull a spark plug out, turn the ignition on, and then disconnect the one side of the coil and then take it straight to the battery, you can see if you have spark on your spark plugs. At the end of the day, th this schematic is really every single ignition system uh, one way or another. I mean, if you if it's got a coil, whether even if you're on a V8 engine where they have a coil on each plug, like the new engines do, essentially you can test that individual coil. Take another coil that is good and check it and check it up against it. But essentially you can measure the primary windings and the secondary windings. And that's, that's pretty much it. Or so much voltage, that voltage jumps that air gap on that spark plug to ground. Now if the spark plug's not grounded, you won't get a spark. But you can be ground too. So be careful touching that, that plug because you could provide the ground. And how does that happen? It happens right through your shoes at this voltage jump through your shoes or just the humidity in the air or whatever it's very high voltage um so the other thing you can always do is if you're having plug uh, spark plug problems again i'll take my plug wires and these plug wires have a certain amount of resistance per inch now is a short one going to be the same no <laughs> it's you know the longer they are the more resistance they're going to have how do you do that you put your meter lead in one plug and hopefully it's touching metal and then you touch the other one and that one says 2.211 K I checked the other one I do have two and that one's about the same 2.122 so these plug wires are gener are good and uh, the other thing you can do is move them around like as you're testing them Move them around a little bit and make sure that reading does not change. I move it around and the reading's staying the same. These plug wires are fine. I guess while I'm at it, we should mention that they do provide you, when you buy uh, plug wires, with dielectric grease. 